Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video. Three thousand dollars may well buy you the GTX Titan Z, which of course is a dual GPU. But the question is, is it going to be worth the cash? So the latest reports indicate that it's actually going to be released on the 29th. Um, I kind of sneaked up on us, didn't it? But that's not been confirmed yet by NVIDIA. So let's go over the basic specifications first. It would appear that we're going to be getting two GK110 GPUs. That's 5,760 CUDAs. I'll say again, 5,760 CUDA cores. Um, obviously total, not each, total, 480 TMUs and 96 ROPs, which makes sense, of course. And of course, each card has, or each GPU has access to 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which is using a 384-bit interface. Long story short, first 12 gigabyte gaming card that's been released. Second point, pretty much business as usual, given the GTX uh, Titan specifications. There are a couple of things, however, to note here. The first is that it is indeed a triple slot card, not dual, but triple. And another point is that Titan is not the GTX 790, which you may remember has been rumored long before um, the Titan Z ever was announced. So it's possible that we're going to be seeing the 790 released in the not too distant future or it may never come to the light of day it's hard to know obviously if the 790 does appear it will likely have worse specifications so there are a couple of points that people have already uh, noted and indeed it's hard to miss them out for one obviously we're dealing with a card which costs far more than most people's pcs by itself so most people just are not going to need to buy this and indeed if you think about it even the GTX 780 plus in other words above 780s are probably not needed for most gamers particularly if you're dealing with like 1080p but assuming you are someone who is running a screen that's at least 1440p preferably higher with really looking at a 4k screen then you might have reason to go for it the problem is there are a lot of different options. I don't like to spark the AMD versus NVIDIA war because I don't really think that it's a, a war and I don't necessarily think that either brand is particularly a better choice than the other. I feel it personally depends on your circumstances and preferences. But it's hard to ignore AMD's 295X2, which is significantly cheaper. Some people are reporting uh, power problems and heat problems. Others are reporting it's all fine and dandy. Obviously, the benefit, however, with the Titan Z is that, well, it's completely air, completely air cooled. However, from what we're gathering from the specifications and NVIDIA have not released the clock speed yet, it's only an 8 T-flop device, which when you consider the ye old regular Titan blank is five is just a smidgen anyway over five T flops. Something doesn't really add up yet. And so there is some cause of concern that it's possible that to get the heat to a manageable and realistic level, NVIDIA have had to basically reduce the clock speeds of the GPU. If that's the case, then we could be seeing situations where well, quite frankly speaking, the Titan Z isn't really worth it. Clearly, however, some of the hardcore amongst us are going to just take the Titan Z, say balls to it, forget the fact that it's under warranty, forget the fact that it's a $3,000 card, take the cooler off and put water cooling on. Also, no doubt, certain manufacturers are going to add the option of water cooling blocks as is. So in other words, you just buy it with the water coolers mounted. However, it's a very tricky situation and for many people it's hard to really justify spending three thousand US dollars on a well card that could well be lower clock speed. Clearly we'll know a lot more in the next few days when the reviews no doubt finally come from embargo and we actually get to see um, websites that are popping them up but my initial thoughts are that, and this is just based on something, by the way, I do own an NVIDIA card, 
but I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the best value for money for a lot of people. Even if you've got the cash, even if you have the money, you could be better off just buying two Titan Blacks, you could be better buying a 295X2. Hell, you could actually buy technically two of, two of those cards for that price, or anything else. And honestly, I don't necessarily know if it's a great idea to spend that amount of money, um when Maxwell's likely going to be the end of the year. So, I mean, as I guess I guess it really depends on if money is absolutely no object. Sure, go ahead, but if $3,000 is certainly going to be really kind of hurting you to buy, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be the best option. Of course, the Titan Black does have other things. It's not just for ye old standard gaming. It's also for double precision as well, and of course this card will offer double precision computing. So that could be a good option, but once again, it's not exactly going to be quadro in terms of performance, so it's a definitely a very odd marketing niche um, for NVIDIA to really target. One wonders if one of the reasons it's done is just to hit that, that ridiculously high price point, and for NVIDIA to have a flagship flagship card, I'm sorry, that perceived is the best in the business. I guess it really depends on your perspective on this one. Personally, I'm unconvinced it's worth the cash, but then I've not seen the numbers to really back it up. So it's going to take a lot of convincing, I feel, for people to really think to themselves, hmm, I want to plonk down, um, well, basically three grand, three thousand US dollars for one, and God help you if you happen to want uh, to SLI those things. Um, I guess it really is going to depend. And obviously, the other point is that some screens, you know, some people have triple monitor setups. So they might be like 5,760 by, say, 1,200 or whatever. And no doubt some people, particularly if they are really wanted to get into serious immersion with large monitor setups, maybe they have even higher resolution requirements. Um... For example, triple screens at 1440p or something ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.